Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, the place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into Power Rangers Universe 113, a universe which started off with Power Rangers Free Foundation, my very first story ever uploaded on Tiger Tales, and the thing that started Tiger Tales off in general. Today we're expanding the universe even more so. We've expanded it with the Apex Rangers, my own form of Rangers, and Comrade Gaim, but it's time to expand it even more. Today we dive in to the Yin side of the universe. See, the universe was split into two halves, the Yin and the Yang. The Yin is where the world is at war. Technology and magic do not get along and are forever putting the world into war, and Power Rangers haven't been seen in 10 years. So let's dive in and find out exactly what's been going on. Welcome to Universe 113. Many tales are told here. Some you may recognize like the Power Rangers Future Foundation. Some are new. This universe was separated into two parts, Yin and Yang. One is normal. The other hosts a war between technology and magic. Here we find more ranger teams, a few common riders, and the introduction to a new level of ranger power, known as the Apex Grid. Get ready for tales beyond any other as we dive into Power Rangers Universe 113. Power Rangers Vengeful Vanguard Chapter 1 a quantum change of events. Luca walked into the commander's office and walked up to the desk with 14 people sat there. They were the commanding officers and captains and generals that made the council. Sirs and madams, thank you for seeing me today, Luca stated. No worries, Luca. You are one of our best captains on the force. We wanted to hear your proposal, one of the generals stated. Yes, I'll get straight to it. I need permission to lead a squad into the Dark Forest. We believe, through satellite imagery and drone surveillance, we think we have found the Witch's spy camp, and we want to detain them, Luca explained. We have been looking over the pictures given to us this morning, and we have come to an agreement, Luca. We are granting you full access on the weapon department and a ten-man squad. It's up to you who you take. Leave at your earliest convenience, one of the chairmen said. Luca nodded, saluted, Thank you, Luca sighed, then he walked out of the room. Within the hour, he had his nine soldiers, all gearing up in tactical gear, loading their weapons, and they all boarded into a van. They took off, and drove up to the entrance of the dark forest. The soldiers all climbed out, and Luca led them to the tall, dark, gloomy trees. Luca held his hands, and everyone stopped and dropped to one knee. One of the soldiers pulled out a pair of binoculars. They looked into the forest, then lowered the binoculars once again. Sir, no visuals. The soldier said to Luca, We advance, stay in a line, keep it tight, watch the rear, Luca called out. When Luca bolted off into the forest, his squad followed him. They all kept their energy rifles aimed, looking left and right, keeping an eye out for any of the warlocks, witches, or magical creatures. They hurried through the forest, when suddenly one of the soldiers was thrown up into the air and flung across the forest and slammed into a tree. He dropped to the floor, everyone trying to see a couple of cloaked figures with different coloured energies in their hands. CONTACT! Luca called out. The soldiers aimed their rifles and opened fire. Lasers flew through the trees, bark exploded off the trunks, and magic wielders threw energy blasts back. Soldiers were hit and thrown back. Magical weirders dropped to the floor and the battle enraged, when suddenly something roared. It was deep and dark. It echoed throughout the forest. Everyone looked around, trying to spot the source of the noise. Luca noticed the magic users also looking confused. Then, the roar came again. Alright, trespassers, take your weapons and leave our forest. Take that deep bellowing thing with you, one of the magic wielders yelled from the cover of a large tree. Yeah, like that ain't one of your things, Luca barked. We have no idea what that is. That ain't ours, another magic wielder called out. Luca looked around the forest again, then spotted something walking towards them. It was a monstrous figure. It looked like a towering tree, with humanoid limbs. It was an amalgamation of different types of bark. Its body was covered in it. Twigs, which sported leaves, also branched off the monster. The monster walked up to the two factions. It raised its arms, and roots came exploding out of the ground, and grabbed a couple of the soldiers and the magic wielders, lifting them off the 
ground and swing them around like they were nothing. Then the roots slammed them into the ground and against the trees. The soldiers turned their fire onto the tree monster and started blasting it. The magic wielders started waving their energy wrapped around hands and magic blasts started hitting the monster as well. The leaves on the monster's body started glowing and then they flew off the monster and flew straight at the two factions. The leaves made contact and sliced everybody like they were razor sharp. Several people dropped to the ground crying out in pain. We should evacuate! One of the soldiers barked when he was hit with several enhanced leaves. Luca looked around at the madness, not knowing what to do. Suddenly, everything froze. Nothing moved. Luca took a deep, uh, deep breath and a step forward, looked at everything frozen around him. An energy blast was frozen in midair. The monster stood there with his arms raised. One magic user was in midair, in mid spell, summoning several fireballs, also completely frozen into place. Luca looked around and then suddenly saw a silver armored being floating down with a cape and a staff. Hello, Luca. I am the Silver Morphing Master, the being said as it touched the ground. What is happening? Luca asked in a complete awe. Things are out of balance. This universe. I have had to step in and gift individuals with something you humans have not seen in ten years. The Silver Morphing Master told him. Power Rangers. Luca stated, Correct. You are my first choice. I gift you this, the master said. Suddenly, in a glimmer of light, a morpher appeared on his wrist. Become the new Quantum Ranger, and help this world before it falls into chaos. You have five months, the Silver Morphin Master said. What do I do with this? Five months till what? Luca barked. The monster looked at unf uh, the frozen tree monster. You want me to fight that? Luca scowled. You are a ranger now, Luca. It is your job to protect. The master said, gesturing over to the squad soldiers and the magical builders. Fine, Luca muttered. Then, the silver morphing master bowed, and then phased away. Everything broke out of the time freeze, and the fight ensued between the soldiers and magic users versus this tree monster. Luca ran up and stood before the monster and revealed his morpher. Quantum power! Luca barked. His arm then shifted into a red ranger suit. He then held up his arm, and in a flash of light, he morphed into the quantum ranger. Everyone stopped attacking as they stood there and stared in awe, as the first power ranger in ten years stood before them. The monster raised its hands again, and the roots exploded out of the ground. The quantum ranger ran through the lashing of roots. He jumped over one and slid under another, with great agility and finesse. He managed to dodge all the root attacks. Then he squared up to the monster and slammed his fist into it. The monster slid backwards. Then the quantum ranger threw another fist. The monster blocked it and tried to throw its own punch. The quantum ranger slapped the fist away, then kicked the monster. Then again, before he pulled out his blaster from its holster, the quantum defender. He aimed it and fired several times. The quantum ranger jumped backwards. Whilst firing, the monster got hit several times before it staggered backwards. Then the quantum ranger shifted its quantum blaster into blade mode and ran at the monster. He slashed the monster several times before he jumped into the air and the blade started to glow. He then swung the glowing blade down as he touched the ground and swung the blade and he delivered the final blow. The monster staggered backwards, fell backwards, and exploded. The ranger stood there victorious. He demorphed and Luca turned to the recovering soldiers and magic users. Sir, how are you a power ranger? One of the soldiers asked. I'll explain everything later. Right now, we have to head back to the truck. Luca barked. What about them? One soldier grunted, tilting his head towards the magic users. They all looked at Luca, waiting for him to respond. Let him go. We've got more important things to discuss. Luca snapped. He then led the soldiers back out of the dark forest and into the truck, and they all headed back to the capital. There, Luca walked into the general's quarters and stood there tall with a quick salute. Luca, why am I being told you morphed? Into a power ranger, the general asked. General Lucicon, I did. I was met with a silver morphing master, Luca explained. Then he pulled down his sleeve to reveal the quantum morpher. By God. <laughs> General Lucicon chuckled in disbelief. Lucicon explained everything. Then the general sat there for a long, time-dragging moment. He took a deep breath. I'm a man who believes in facts, hard evidence. And I'll say this. The morphing master is making Power Rangers once again... And not new ones. They must be desperate. This monster 
It was something else. Something we haven't seen. Anything like in ten years. The Power Rangers have been absent. We need someone to defend the capital if another monster attacks, the general stated. Luca saluted. Good. Now go get some rest, the general ordered. Luca walked down to the general's quarters. He headed home to find his girlfriend, CJ, in the kitchen preparing dinner. Hi, honey. How's work? I didn't hear of you. I got kind of worried, CJ said with a weak smile. She placed down the knife, walked over to him, and she planted a kiss on his lips. Have I got a real good reason why? Luca sighed. Then Luca sat down and explained everything that happened when he was in the dark forest. And there you have it guys, our first introduction to the Yin side of the universe and our first ranger. Now make sure you check out Power Rangers Future Foundation, the Apex Rangers and Kamen Rider Gaim, the three other stories in Power Rangers Universe 113. That being said, make sure you check out the three ranger bros, of course, there's Mark the Corn Ranger with his podcast Nerd Through Comics, and make sure you check out Cosmic District 7 with his Power Rangers Universe 19 podcast. Both of them host their own Power Rangers storylines in Universe 19 and Universe 20. And they've also been connected in multiple ways, so make sure you check them out. Make sure you check out the other Tiger Tales channels. We have Tiger Tales The Lost Stories, Tiger Tales Game Over, and Tiger Tales Mysterious Origins. There you'll find more fan fictions and storylines for you to listen to in all different shapes and sizes. Make sure you check out the Zero to Hero uh, podcast and the Zero to Hero network. Make sure you check out the Author's Crown YouTube channel and if you give a dad a podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and of course I shall see you guys real soon.